Well, I wrote a sermon. I read the sermon over today, and uh, some of the connections in these sentences, I had to think, I had to think about it. And I am getting a little older, so, it, so but I, I had to think about it. I know uh, when, I, uh, when I first got saved, I remember what my mother told me. And, and I, I was, uh, when I got saved, I was depressed for about six months when I first got saved. Now, if you talk to your average Baptist preacher, ah, I never brought that up to anybody. It, it was a secret. I was depressed for six months. And uh, I came out of that. So if anybody, you know, I always say to myself, well, God puts me through things so that if you have it, then I can sympathize, empathize. One of them is if you've experienced it yourself. Which one is the one? Does anybody know the difference? Any English teachers? Or the <laughs> so I have empathy. And so when people say, uh, oh, you, you have, uh, you're depressed, and then, uh, you know, the preacher can snap out of it. Just snap out of it. Start praising the God, uh, uh, the God of uh, creation, and get the joy of the Lord, and snap out of it. Well, man, it didn't work that way. It, it did not work that way. And I remember when I first got saved, uh, shortly after that, my mother said to me, Gary, you used to be so happy. Not <laughs> dumb. And it, 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 it didn't work the way that some of these guys say it should work. <laughs> and sometimes I, I, I wonder, I, I wonder about these things. But wouldn't you like to know that you're saved? Are you saved here today? Yeah. And do you want to know you're saved though? You want to have the assurance of salvation. You want that. That something really happened and it takes a lifetime for things to happen. God's still working on you, sister. And God has to work on you. And then you get, slowly get this assurance, more and more assurance. That, that, you know, it's kind of like driving a car. You know, guys drive a car just like that. Sometimes girls, they don't know the left side and the right side of the road. They're not as, I don't know. I just got behind him and started driving. My dad, one of my dad's first jobs, he never drove in his life, and he got a job as a truck driver. <laughs> he said, uh, well, they asked, do you know how to drive? He said, oh, I can drive that thing. And he got in and just drove. But back then, the cars only went 15 miles, and the truck only went 15 miles an hour. And, you know, way back in the day. And, uh, but you, you want to have assurance. That, uh, that you've changed and, and that you're really saved. Uh, I want you to turn to 2 Peter 1.10. I'm sorry I didn't tell you to go there first. 2 Peter 1.10. Our title is Assurance. I want you to have assurance of things that have changed. <clears throat> and uh, I know we, uh, there, there are horror stories out there. We knew of a, a preacher that had been, uh, that had gotten divorced. It was a policeman. He had gotten divorced. And uh, he remarried. He then uh, went to school. Uh, I don't know if he got saved before or after. I don't know. They, he ended up starting a church. He ends up running off with a piano player. Or he ran off with somebody else. And now, what, what kind of assurance did, does that breed a little doubt in your mind? It breeds a lot of doubt in my mind. But I'll tell you, there, there are people that they just, they keep sinning. And you and I are going to keep sinning till the day we're called home. And we, uh, 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 saints are sinners, but they, uh, I guess the phrase is, but they need to sin. They're not sinless, but they need to sin less <laughs> right that's a good phrase they're not sinless but they need to sin less and uh, before verse 10 uh, we have all these things that you're uh, to give diligence to verse 5 to add to your faith virtue virtue knowledge knowledge temperance temperance patience 
patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, charity. And you're to add these things. They're added to, to the recipe. It says uh, in verse 10, if you do these things, you shall never fall, never fall. But I, uh, I, I would like to think uh, things would change. Now, my wife hasn't cut my hair in a month. Does, does it appear that way? It's been a month. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like this. If you rode, if you rode the heart and you got saved, what do they usually do? They get off the heart. I got saved and I got on the heart. Now, is that weird? I guess I wanted to address all my fears, so I, I was afraid of a motorcycle. And I, I actually went and got a license. I didn't get a permanent license, I got a, a, a temporary license. And I went and got on a motorcycle and I almost put it over the cliff back here. But I, I was able to get out on the street, I drove through the park, all the way through the park, and I turned around and I came back and, and I borrowed one of my employees' motorcycles. And, and I parked it and I never got on again. I just wanted to prove I could do it. If I was still on that thing, I'd be, I'd be deader than a hammer. But it's kind of weird. I, usually you get off the bike when you get saved, but I got on the bike. I don't know, it's kind of strange that way. But folks, we, we should be changing and maturing. And then when you do change, you don't uh, see the changes. They kind of slowly come. It's kind of like a, a plant. It grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and uh, so on. And uh, I, uh, you know, in my attitude towards money, I, I guess I've always been liberal with money. Liberal with it. I would give it away. I was big into not UNICEF. What was uh, what was uh, what's the red feather? Red Cross. It, uh, the Red Cross. There was a drive when we were kids. When we were little, they changed the name. Now, no, not not March of Dimes. It's the Red Cross, and they call it Red Feather. No, when we were in grade school, I would always be giving a lot of money to it. Anyway, I. Uh, you want to have good things happening in your life. You, who, who here wants bad things to happen in their life? <clears throat> we'll, we'll get to the sermon. Uh, they call it red feather now. But now nowadays, I won't give to it because they're giving money to abortion clinics. And goofy. Just goofy. And so uh, we change it. We, we get off that. Well, I was... I was Talking to Jim and Tiffany about auctions, I, my last auction was in Connecticut. This, this literally, I, you know, there's tons of stories I have on auctions. This was my last auction. Ben went with me. This, this one here did. Ben went with me. It was an old man that was selling a big shop, all engraving stuff. Uh, high end, there was a high end camera. I mean, a high end camera. They had to be worth new twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. You know what its value was? It was like brand new. You know what its value was? Zilch, because the technology changed. And so I was buying all these antiques that I still use and resell them. And that auctioneer told me, you know, uh, you're not, you're the guy from Cleveland. I was in Connecticut. We. We went kind of through New York, New York, and uh, you know, we—I already was pastoring. It was pastoring. We were—we weren't didn't have the building yet. I was—we were up there in the loft, and um, auctioneer said, "Are you the guy from Cleveland?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, you're not getting out of here for under hundred. You're, you're not getting out of here. They, I don't know if they're going to bid, bid me up or whatever, but." <clears throat> Anyway, I bought a ton of stuff, and this old guy was running, was his shop. I really felt bad for the old guy. Bruno. Bruno was his name. And he's seeing all his stuff get, his life's work is going. He's in his 80s, and all of it's just gone. <clears throat> so I bought... Uh, the moment I made a purchase, Ben, oh, 
he was looking at me from a distance and said, oh, that means we're here for the duration because I was going to buy a bunch of stuff. If he wasn't, he didn't have a driver's license, but he was able to, on a busy main highway, back, back the trailer in for the pickup the next day for all the stuff I bought. And we wired in money because I ran out of money. And uh, uh, there was this cabinet, a tool cabinet. It was antique wood. It was not like the new tool cabinets. We have one next door. And I looked in there, and there was about three spindles in there. These spindles are worth 2000 bucks a piece. They were decal spindles for my machines. They're worth a couple grand a piece if you buy them new. I knew what they were. And uh, everything's engraving there. And they're They're auctioning all. Yeah, give me $10. $10. I know what's in the cabinet. $10. $10. We ended up, I bought it for 50 bucks. <laughs> but I knew there was a gold mine in that. In those drawers. I mean, I opened this, there they were right on the top drawer. The day of the pickup, that's the next day. <clears throat> I went to start picking up, and if Ben wasn't with me, he had muscles to help me move this stuff. So I opened up the drawer, and the spindles were gone. Uh -oh. They were gone. Now, now I'm a safe man. Should I get mad? I was not mad. I wasn't the least bit mad. I wasn't mad. I figured out right away what happened. What happened? They saw it and sold it for themselves. Pardon? They saw it and sold it for themselves. Bruno took the owner. Because he knew what was in there. He knew that that cabinet was worth a thousand dollars. And I auctioned that stuff off online. And, uh, half that went to Mexico. And I, I, I looked in there and it was, they were gone. And I said, oh, Ben. I bet you Bruno took him and he hid him. Because he lived there, it was at his house too, so he was living there. So at night he went in there. Well, the auctioneer's responsible for all the gear and where it's going. They got their helpers. The auctioneer's gone and their helpers are there. And so I went up to the auctioneer and I said to him, you know, Bruno, I said, what was in there? These spindles are in there. And I said, they're all gone. And I said, that's really why I bought the cabinet. The rest of it was kind of junky in there. And I said, I really wanted just that. But I, I think we took the whole cabinet. I may have left the cabinet and just cleared it out. I don't know what I did. And, uh, and the auctioneer said to me, well, I'll go talk to her now. I'll go. And that's, now, I had no proof that he took it. I had no proof. But my assumption was that he took it. And by the way, auctioneers, those that are buyers, were called bottom feeders. This isn't the, this, the, these uh, chattels are, this was all heavy duty industrial. Heavy duty industrial. So it's not the regular kind of auction that you're, even though they auction it off the same way. And uh, uh, I said, you know, I think, I think Bruno took him. And he, and he looked at Bruno and he said, you know, you're probably right. I, he said, I'll, I'll go talk. I didn't lose my temper. And if I didn't get the spindles, well, it's not the end of the world. I'm still going to heaven. So he talked to Bruno, and uh, he came, the auctioneer came back to me, and he said to me, he said, you were right, Bruno took him. And so I got him back. He said, Bruno's going to go get him. And we threw him back in the drawer. His life was disintegrating. <clears throat> oh, I know what I told him. I went up to Bruno. And now you could guess his nationality with a name like Bruno. <laughs> he must have been a Polak or a German or a Hungarian. I don't know what he was. And he had an accent. And I, I, I went up to him and I said, now Bruno, and I was as nice as pie. And I said to him, you know, you've had your turn. And uh, it, it, was, it was in a very kind way. He said, well, you know, it's, it, it's my turn now. It's my turn. And it wasn't nasty, it was very friendly, and we were, we were on good terms. It's, it's, it's my turn to have this stuff. And he kind of like, oh yes. I mean, he's old, he's, he's 80 or 85. 
he, he's, I'm sure by now he's dead. He'd be, he'd be 105 or 110. And so uh, I got the stuff back, and I said, you know, it, but I, I know, it's time to let it go. I told him, you know, it's just time to let it go. And now it's my turn. My turn. We're working, working. All these men are there. And we're, and then we're all the stuff up. Getting on the truck. Bruno comes up to me in front of everybody. In front of everybody, real loud. And he looked at me. He went like this. And he looked at Ben. He looked at Ben. And he said, This is your son? This is your son? I said, yeah, that's my son, Ben. I introduced that. This is Bruno, and this is my son, Ben. And in front of everybody, he said, my son, never help Bruno. It just broke my heart. It was one of the saddest things I ever heard. One of the saddest things I ever heard. My son... Never help Bruno, just like a foreigner would say it. And he said it in front of all those men, what a sad life. His son never helped him. He was just shocked that my son was helping me. Wouldn't it be a blessing if your, your son helps you? Your, your children help you. That affected me. My son never helped Bruno. Never forget it. That my life would change enough because of Jesus to make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Give diligence, verse 10, 2 Peter 1. It's been 20 some years since I told that story. I remember who was here the day I told my uncle, aunt and uncle were here. They never could figure out where to put the money because we never passed the bucket. They would always call me halfway home on the west side. I said, we didn't know where to put the money. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, we forget to do that. <laughs> yes. You want assurance that you're saved, that Jesus has saved your soul, that he has intervened in your life, that he's going to do a work of God on you and make you the man or woman that he'd have you to be. Verse 10, 2 Peter chapter 1, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. To have assurance in your life that you are indeed saved. Now, I have people say, this is a flash in the pan. Flash in the pan. This ain't no flash in the pan, man. This is, we're, we're here for the duration. Sanctification is the seed of salvation. Sanctification is salvation. It's the only part of salvation that is ongoing. Ongoing. It has been planted into the heart of the new believer in Christ. If you're saved here today, young lady, look up there. If you're saved here today, you got saved. It is planted in your heart like seeds planted in the spring in, in new soil and planted there to grow. Then the Holy Spirit spends your lifetime weeding it out, that is your heart, weeding your heart out of all the sin that grows there. Sanctification is the seed and assurance of your salvation, your sanctification is the flower which grows out of it. Amen. Amen. Paul said with all assurance 
This is 30 years after his salvation. I know whom I have believed. 30 years later, he makes that statement. Assurance, we do know that we know him, amen. It is, it is not a hope so salvation. This is a no so salvation. And what is the proof? If we keep his commandments, and what is his commandments? Here it is, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Doubt and the doubting of one's salvation is a stumbling stone. The Bible says, so take up the stumbling block out of the way, for it is a sin which doth so easily beset us to doubt us. It is like money. When one knows it is safely deposited in their account, when one knows the money is safely deposited in the account, the peace of assurance flourishes. I mean, if you knew right now that you had a million dollars stashed away in an account, a secured account with your name on it, would you feel pretty comfortable? Right? If we want to talk about dollars and cents. Well, salvation has been planted in your account. Amen. And so the peace of assurance should flourish. Keeping the commandments, are you? Are you keeping the commandments? The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Crucified. So I preach a sermon. I only preached it once here. Up here, up there. Uh, the, the, the three crosses. crosses the, the crucifixion of Christ. We are crucified with, with Christ. And the, and the world is crucified. The three crosses. I am crucified with Christ. So it is, as it is written, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, you're hanging on the cross, crucified with him, and you're reckoned to be dead. Dead. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That is the evidence of salvation and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the seed of salvation. There is a letter written upon which a seal has been placed so that no man can add nor subtract from its contents. In other words, there's a letter and it's got the seal on it. And if the seal's not broken and you delivered that letter, you know no one, no one read it, no one got in it to monkey with it. A seal's been placed so that no man can add to nor subtract from its contents, and that is the Bible. You can't add to it nor subtract from it. And when a man is saved, a seal has been set that no man can access. A seal upon the heart. Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. There is rain which comes into the believer's life. And that is the water of the word. And it rains down upon your heart to make the believer grow in grace. And also the raining down of sin. The world, the flesh, and the devil. And if that rain comes in there, it will, it will quench the spirit. As it is written, quench not the spirit. Like two different types of rain. Sin is like a great wind which came upon Job's children. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. It is like the tempestuous wind called Eurocladen. When the ship was caught, 
and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Plata, we had much work to come by the boat. Assurance, they couldn't bear the boat up. But assurance is to bear you up so that you do not become shipwrecked. These things I speak today to bear up the hearts of God's people whose assurance is weak. For there are those who are weak. There are times, and no doubt will be times, as it was for Paul when he saw the brethren, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. He saw the brethren and he took courage. <clears throat> Meaning there are those that have gone on before us. And if we look at those brethren that went on, it should bear us up to know that we also will finish our course. Those who went before us as a great company of believers, saying we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I should, you know, I think about this. One time, Grandpa, what, there's going to be a day Grandpa's going to die. And Grandpa's not going to be here. And you may point and say, well, my Grandpa was a preacher. You don't need to point to me. You need to point to Jesus. I have a Savior. I'm not your Savior. Assurance is knowing that Christ has been planted into the heart. That is your heart. As a root out of a dry ground. Christ has taken root and has taken deep root. <coughs> Christ has taken root and will surely grow. I'm just quoting verses. God is love. And we are rooted and grounded, the Bible says, in love. And as a result, rooted and built up in him. The Spirit of God will give witness to assurance. For the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Listen, believer. You are filled with the Spirit of God. So it says, filled with the Spirit of God, which is likened to the oil of gladness. And the oil is above the water, so you will never sink into the water of despair. Amen. For the oil always rises to the top. So you may say, as said Paul, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Are you adrift upon the sea of life? Then take hold of the tie that binds us and find assurance and the tug of the hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. As you throw the anchor over, you know, we go, I'd go fishing with my dad, we throw the anchor over, and you, you don't tie it off at the stern, you always tie it off at the bow and it takes hold of the bottom. You can't see the anchor, but when you tug on it, you can feel it. That tie that binds us, the anchor of the soul, which is Jesus Christ. I went one time with, I took the wife and my, myself out uh, fishing with my sister. I threw the anchor over, and the rope came loose from the anchor. I pulled on the ice, I think we're a trip. And I pulled on the, I almost, I almost fell over in the boat. I pulled it and I said, we're adrift. <laughs> we're adrift. The anchor of the soul, which is Christ the Lord. When you were lost, you were as that colt. When you were lost, you were like that colt which Christ rode into Jerusalem, the colt whom Christ set loose him. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. 
They loosed the colt, and the colt was freed, no longer tied. And be assured, Christ will ride you into Jerusalem. The mother of us all, the Bible says. A type of heaven. And we will, and we will never buck Jesus off. Amen. It's a type of Jesus marching us to heaven. Assurance is like a star. Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you see it, and sometimes you don't. David sees it and says this, Thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. While at other times says, Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses? It can come and go. One day it is clear. Another day it is cloudy, like an eclipse in a Christian's assurance. And always remember the banner of heaven above reads this. His banner over me was love. Oh, to have the seeds of assurance planted. But before such seeds can be planted, the plowing of humbleness in repentance must take place. There are those who appear to possess assurance early. You know, I've, I've known people that uh, when they get saved, they seem to be on fire. They have assurance early. Yet Isaac asks this, how camest thou by the venison so soon? Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is saved. Balaam could say, my God, yet he was a sorcerer. A child of God who possesses little assurance can have said of them, Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. I remember uh, early on, somebody, the guys, they, they're, they're playing softball. They slide into second base. I, I forget what all happened, but man, the foul words that came out of his mouth. And those that surrounded him and kind of like shocked me, so I'm sorry. They were newly saved then. And God had yet to kick that out. They are not afraid to travel at night because they possess not the jewel of, of assurance. Saved? Are you saved? You are still a sinner. But you cannot sin away your soul. But you may sin away your assurance, creating doubt in your mind. You want assurance? Do you want assurance? Then just stop sinning. Amen. Amen. As it is written, and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness is the effect of it. Quietness and assurance forever. Assurance, shall it lift the man or humble the man? As Paul writes, unto me who am less than the least of all saints. When a man is more and more assured of his salvation, it will not lift him, it will humble him. As Paul writes, unto me who am less than the least of all saints. Assurance weeds out sin. And little assurance breeds sin and thinks themselves better than others, so much so he may say, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this Republican. Assurance, you want assurance, you have assurance, it is a little taste of heaven. And those that possess it must be sweet to be around. Assurance belongs to those who are dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Assurance reserved for those who are alive unto God, for the living, the living, the living. He shall praise thee, as the verse says, the living. The living, alive unto God, he shall praise thee. 
for old and young alike. For out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Assurance breeds joy in the believer, and such joy breeds the strength of serving Jesus. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. You know, I got these cuckoo clocks with the weights on them. Assurance is like the weights of the clock. The farther they sink, the deeper assurance is rooted. The farther the weights sink, the deepest of sins are forgiven and forgotten. The farther they sink, they set the clock in motion. And they set the Christian in motion in obedience and service. Amen. Assurance. It draws our eyes heavenward, not earthward. Assurance breeds contentment, so one may say, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. It is like the reading of the will. You know, they realize it or receive a letter that you are related to so-and-so and they ask that they travel there to receive their inheritance and hear the will being read. Like the reading of the will and the receiving of the inheritance, one must travel to the city where it will be read and received. We are on a two-day journey to the city where God's will will be read and received. See, here's the idea is this. You are already the inheritor. You just have to have the will read, which is this will, and you just have to be present for the reading and to receive the inheritance. And it's a two-day journey to get there, which is 2,000 years. Are you assured of such things? Do you believe these things? Then you possess the peace such assurance gives. The Comforter has come to escort us to our destination. They send a representative to come and get you, to take you there. That is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. It is like riding in a coach, an English coach, a horse-drawn coach to the city on a hill where lives our benefactor, the Lord Jesus Christ. Assurance, is it waning? I, I'm here to tell you that you already are the inheritor. You possess that. You just have to receive it then. You've got to get to the city in order to receive it. Assurance, so I ask, is it waning? Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. It will not tarry. So we are on our way there. Are you assured of such things, that you are on your way there? Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. <coughs> it is not time to get off the coach. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So we press on, assured of such things. But what is this? What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the serpent had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. That Christ comes and meets us halfway. While we're on this journey. Christ comes to meet us in the air. For he knows our patience draws thin. 
Assurance is but a buttress. Assurance is just a buttress to the walls of our salvation. Hey. You know, the Bible's just filled with these verses. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Do you believe that? Assurance. So give diligence and make your calling an election sure. You and I are heading for heaven to meet our Lord in the air. Best regards in Christ. Shake hands before you.